Hmm. Well, I don't have a magic answer to that. <clears throat> um, I know it, um, ultimately, I guess people, it depends on who the infiltrator is. If, if it's a, a cop who's been trained to come in, it may be very difficult mm. to figure out who they are. I think ultimately a, a lot of groups, you, you have to go ahead and do what you're doing and knowing that there may be undercover cops informants in the organization because uh, you can't really accuse someone of being mm. an undercover cop unless you have direct proof. Now, if you gather enough proof and stuff, then you can make the accusation. Mm. But you have to assume that there will be some in the group. Mm. And, of course, they want you, they want your fear of that to maybe keep you from organizing. So uh, you, just, you have to go ahead and do what you have to do. In the Black Panther Party, uh, after a certain period of time, uh, we stopped accepting new members. Because people could, at the beginning could just walk in and say, I want to join, and they join. But we didn't know what the counterintelligence program was exactly. But at some point, we knew we were being infiltrated. So they you know, put a stop on new members and new, and new chapters and branches because we didn't know how to deal with it. You know, we, we knew. But um, I think sometimes the undercover informants um, may reveal themselves if you pay attention, if you see, if you hear people or see people doing things that you know is not on the path that your organization has sought, uh, start to pay attention to them. You know, obviously you can accuse them of anything, but listen to them. If you see that they're doing disruptive things to get you off your mission, things that may bring you into conflict that were obviously will bring you into conflict right. with the cops. Mm -hmm. So well, why you know why you know ask them why you're proposing this, mm. you know this this will make things harder for us. So mm. you have to do that. But on the other hand, you can't get paralyzed with fear because mm. uh, they're going to do it. And as you as your newspaper, The Guardian, has shown uh, with the uh, revelations about the cooperation be between the NSA and G GC HQ HQ, mm -hmm. yeah. it's going on. Yeah, you know, and, and it probably will continue to go. On. Just a quick question on this, like. I mean, so the, the Black Panther Party actually stopped accepting new members. Was that permanent? Was that what contributed? It wasn't to the permanent, no. no. But it actually did for a while. I, you know, I can use myself as an example. Uh, I joined the Black Panther Party in Detroit, Michigan. There were ab actually two chapters of the Black Panther Party in Detroit. The first chapter started probably around 68 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the people who started that chapter became aware that they were being infiltrated by undercover informants. The central headquarters in Oakland, California was aware of it. So what they did was they disbanded that chapter. They said, we don't know who all's in there. We know everybody's not a police informant, but we know there's some informants in there. That's been documented mm -hmm. in the, uh, 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 the COINTELPRO documents that became public. It talks about the placement of a police informant in the Detroit chapter of the Black Panther Party. So the central office of the Black Panther Party just said, we're sorry, we have to shut this chapter down. We don't know what's going on. And then a year or so later, they reopened it up. So I joined, joined the reopened chapter in Detroit, Michigan, after they had figured out who was what and what was going on. But it wasn't a permanent uh, not accepting, but definitely for a while, we didn't have any choice. We didn't know what we were up mm -hmm. against. We didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm.